In this problem, we're asked to use Lagrange multipliers to find the global max and min of our function f restricted to a compact region E. And our function f is defined as f of x, y, z equals y. And then our compact region is defined by our um, two constraint functions. So we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2. So the sphere of radius square root 2. And then we have x squared minus yz equals 1. So our compact region is the region that satisfies both of those constraints. OK, so first uh, we want to make sure, or we want to check for critical points along our constraint set. So that's um, points that satisfy the following a1 times our gradient of our first constraint which is 2x I should first note um, that we'll let g1 be the function x squared plus y squared plus z squared and then our constraint, our first constraint is just the level curve um, where g is equal to 2. And then our second constraint is going to be g2 is equal to x squared minus yz. And our second constraint is when g2 is equal to 1, the level curve when g2 is equal to 1. OK, so first we want to try and find a linear combination of our gradients of g1 and g2 such that it's equal to 0. So we have 2x so we want to find a linear combination of these two constraints gradients of the two constraints um, where it equals 0. So we can go ahead and then we also want to satisfy our two constraints. So we have a1. So we'll first check to see. Uh, we can go ahead and plug it, pull a 2 out. So we have 2a1 times xyz plus a2 times 2x minus z minus y. And first, let's see what happens if we let a1 equal 0. Well, if a1 is equal to 0, then that means that a2 times 2x equals 0. And a2 times, so. So we have the, the following three equations that we need to be satisfied. But we can't have a2 equals 0 since that's a trivial combination of our two. So if a2 is non-zero, then that implies that x is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, and y is equal to 0. So we have x, y, and z are equal to 0. But now if we just check even one of our constraints, or both, um, when we plug in x, y, and z equals 0, we get an inequality. We get that 0 is equal to 2. So we get a contradiction just by plugging into our first constraint. So that means that a1 is not 0. So if a1 is non-0, then We can divide both sides of our equation by 2a1. So we get a1 
and then we'll let um, a3 be a2 over 2a1. So we get we get the following, we get negative, or we'll let, we'll let it be negative two, a2 over 2a1. So this is minus. So we get 0 is equal to xyz minus a3 times 2x comma negative z comma negative y. So we can bring this a3 term to the other side of the equation and we get that xyz is equal to a3 times 2x comma negative z comma negative y. So that means that x is equal to a 2a3x, y is equal to negative a3z, and z is equal to negative a3 times y. And that's just by letting our components equal to each other. So we can look at this equation and we see that x times the quantity 1 minus 2a3 is equal to 0. So that gives us two possibilities, either x is equal to 0 or 1 minus 2a3 is equal to 0. We'll first check when 1 minus 2a3 is equal to 0. So this means that a3 is equal to one half. So if a3 is equal to one half, then we know that y is equal to negative one half z, and then z is equal to negative one half y, which we know y is negative one half z. So we get that z is equal to 1 fourth z, or three-fourths times z is equal to zero, which means that z is equal to zero. And if z is equal to zero, then so is y. And that means that we have so we can look at our two constraints as well. So we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 2. But y and z are both 0. So we have x squared is equal to 2. And then from our second constraint, we have x squared minus yz is equal to 1, yz are 0, so we have x squared is equal to 1. So we have x squared is equal to 1 and x squared is equal to 2, so that's a contradiction. And we know that 1 minus 2a3 is not equal to 0. Okay, so if 1 minus 2a3 is not equal to 0, then we're back here. And that means that x has to be equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, then we can go ahead
So if we let x equal to zero, or well, we know that x is equal to zero if it's a critical point on our constraint set. So if x is equal to zero, then we have y squared plus c squared is equal to 2, and negative yz is equal to 1. We can go ahead and uh, complete the square here. And we get y plus z quantity squared minus 2yz is equal to 2, but we know that minus yz is equal to 1, so we have y plus z squared plus, or quantity squared plus 2 is equal to 2, or y plus z quantity squared is equal to 0. That means that y plus z is equal to zero, and which means that y is equal to negative z. So now we know that y is equal to negative z, and we also know that negative yz is equal to one. If y is equal to negative z, then we have z squared is equal to one. And if z squared is equal to 1, then z is equal to plus or minus 1. And y is equal to negative z, so that means y is going to have the opposite sign of z, so we'll just write that as minus plus 1. Um, so our points, we're going to actually have four points. So we know that x is equal to 0, and y and z are opposite signs and equal to plus or minus 1. And both of those, and all of those points, or those two points, are going to satisfy our constraint equation. And we didn't even really have to solve for A1 and A2 to know that we can find those. Um, we just needed to find the points x, y, and z. So we can create a list. Um, well, let's start a list of So we have these two points, which occur on our, um, our critical points on our constraint set. And now we want to go ahead and check our constraint submanifold, which is when our Just going to rewrite some basic information quick. So we have so we have our function f, and we have our two constraints, and we want to check our constraint submanifold. So we'll let the gradient of f equal to some constant lambda times our gradient of g, g1, plus, and we'll call that lambda1, plus lambda2, times the gradient of g2. So we want to satisfy this, this equation, and then we also want to satisfy our two constraint equations. Okay, so we already have calculated our gradients of g1 and g2. We need to calculate the gradient of g or of f, which is easy, just 0, 1, 0. And that's equal to lambda 1 times our gradient of g1, which is
Okay, so we have our equation. We have 0, 1, 0 is equal to negative 2 lambda 1 times x, y, z plus lambda 2 times 2x comma negative z comma negative y. Okay, so first let's check to see if lambda 1 equals 0 is about, gives us some sort of result. So if lambda 1 equals 0, then that implies that 0 is equal to lambda 2 times 2x. Um, but lambda 2 cannot be equal to 0 since if both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are equal to 0, we see that we have 0, 1, 0 is equal to 0, 0, 0, which is contradiction. So we know that x has to be equal to 0 since lambda 2 cannot also be equal to 0. And then we have z is equal to negative 1 over lambda 2. And then finally we have that y has to be equal to 0. Because lambda 2, again, cannot be equal to 0. So if we have x equals 0 and y equals 0, we can look just quickly at this constraint to see that we have 0 squared minus 0 times z is equal to 1. So that means that we have 0 is equal to 1, which is a contradiction. So we know that if we assume that lambda 1 is equal to 0, we get contradiction. So we know that lambda 1 is not equal to 0. Okay, so so now that lambda 1 is not equal to 0, we can go ahead and divide both sides of our equation by, by uh, 2 lambda 1, since we know we won't be dividing by 0. And we'll go ahead and introduce some new um, constants. Let's say b is equal to 1 over 2 lambda 1. And we'll let c be equal to lambda 2 over 2 lambda 1. So we see that we have, if we introduce these con constants, we get and we'll let c be equal to, again, negative lambda 2 over 2 lambda 1, so that we get plus c So we get the following equation. We have b times 0, 1, 0 plus c times 2x comma negative z comma negative y is equal to x, y, z. So we can write these equations out. So we have So we have that x is equal to 2c times x, y is equal to b minus c times z, and we have z that is equal to negative c times y. Okay, so first looking at this equation, again, we, had, we saw something similar earlier. So we have x times the quantity 1 minus 2c is equal to 0. So we'll let 
so we know that either x is equal to 0 or 1 minus 2c is equal to 0, or both. So first we'll let 1 minus 2c equal 0, which tells us that c is going to be equal to 1 half. And when we plug in that information here, we get y is equal to b minus 1 half z, and z is equal to minus 1 half times y. So we can go ahead and plug in our value for z into our equation for y. So we get y is equal to b plus 1 fourth y, or b is equal to 4 thirds b, or y is equal to 4 thirds b, since we have 3 fourths y equals b. And so if we let y equal to 3 four, or 4 thirds b, then z is equal to 2 thirds b, and x is just x so far. So we have Okay, so now we have y is equal to four thirds b and z is equal to negative two thirds b and x is just the way it is so far. Okay, so we'll come back to that um, for a second. We'll, we'll go back and let x be equal to zero and see what happens so that we can rule out that, hopefully rule out that possibility, and then we'll see where this takes us. So we'll, we'll come back to this as a potential critical point. And so we'll let We'll let x equal to 0, and then we still have our equations y equals b minus c times z, and z is equal to negative c times y. And if x is equal to 0, then that means that based off of our two constraints, we have y squared plus z squared is equal to 2, and negative z, yz is equal to 1. And again, we can factor this, or complete the square, rather, as we did before. So, and again, we have negative yz is equal to 1, so we have... y plus c quantity squared plus 2 is equal to 2. So that means that y plus c quantity squared is equal to 0. And y is equal to negative z. And again, we get the same points, um, y equal to
plus or minus 1, and z is equal to minus plus 1. And so we didn't get any new information by letting x equal to 0. So that means that we can continue on. So we, if we let x equal to 0, we get just the same points as from before. OK, so going back to the case where c is equal to 1 half, So if c is equal to 1 half, then we have x squared we have our constraint equations as before. But this time we know information about y and z and how they're related. So we know that y is equal to 4 thirds b and z is equal to negative 2 thirds b. So when we plug in for y and z into our constraint equations, we'll get two equations in terms of x and b. And then we'll be able to solve for our x and b. So we have So using our first constraint equation, we have x squared plus 16 ninths b squared plus 4 ninths b squared is equal to 2. So we get x squared plus 20 ninth, 20 ninths b squared is equal to 2. And then using our second constraint equation and plugging in y and z values, we have x squared plus 8 ninths b squared is equal to 1. We can solve for x squared. We get x squared is equal to 1 minus 8 ninths b squared. And we can plug into our equation here. We get 1 minus 8 ninths b squared plus 20 ninths b squared is equal to 2. So we get Twelve ninths b squared is equal to one, and we get that b squared is equal to nine twelfths, or b is equal to plus or minus 3 over 2 square roots 3. And we can go ahead and so we can write this as, um, yeah. So now we can use our b term to get our x or our y and z coordinates quickly. So we have 4 thirds times 
plus or minus 3 over 2 squared 3 is going to be 2 over square root 3, which is equal to plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 over 3. And then z is going to be negative 2 thirds times plus or minus 3 over 2 square roots of 3, which is going to be negative 1 over the square root 3, which is equal to, or Alright, it'll be negative, it'll be minus plus, so again it'll have alternating signs from our y coordinate. So we'll write it as minus plus, and that's equal to minus plus root 3 over 3. Okay, so we have our y and z coordinates for our um, critical point when c is equal to 1 half, and we can use um, any number of equations to determine our x value. Um, we'll just use this equation, so we have x squared x squared plus 20 ninths times b squared, which is equal to 9 twelfths, is equal to 2. We have x squared plus 5 thirds is equal to 2. x squared is equal to one-third, um, and then that means that x is equal to plus or minus square root three over three. And so we notice that since we have x squared terms in both of these equations, it doesn't really matter which um, we use plus or minus, because we'll get the same value when we place it into our x squared terms. So um, this x plus or minus doesn't actually correspond with our y and z, which have to be alternating, or the negation of each other. Um, so we're actually going to get two points from varying these times two for varying the x's, so we have four total critical points when c is equal to one half. And so we'll go ahead and start So our x component can either be plus or minus. So we have two points where x is positive and two points where x is negative. And then our y component is going to be alternating between plus and minus 2 square roots 3 over 3. So we have We have plus, minus, plus, minus, 2 square root 3 over 3. And then our z component is going to be the opposite sign of our y component, and it's going to be the square root 3 over 3. So we have Q 
Okay, so we had two critical points on our constraint set and four on the constraint uh, submanifold. And we want to find what our global max and mins are. So um, when we plug into F, we really only care about what our Y component is since F is only dependent on Y. In fact, it is the Y component. So we only care about our Y components and we know that 2 times the square root 3 over 3 is more than 1 and negative 2 square root 3 over 3 is less than negative 1. So we're going to have two maximums. So this, this will yield a value of 2 squared 3 over 3, and so will this point. And then this point will yield a global minimum. So these two points will yield a global minimum because we're going to be at negative 2 squared 3 over 3 um, at both of them. So we have four critical points that tell us our global max and mins on our compact region E. Okay. 